Hello, hello, and welcome to another art video. Today, we are going to be doing our final project on the theme of flowers. And I call this freedom painting. It has no rules. You could also probably call it mixed media because you can use any art medium you want. In this video, I use watercolor paper, watercolor pencils, watercolor paint, paint brushes, of course, water, and a black marker or a pen. You could also bring in wax crayons, washable markers, regular pencil crayons. This is just all about developing your own artistic style through fun. So this is a style of painting that I love to do as a mindfulness activity. So this is sped up about five times faster than I was moving in real life. But I started with using watercolor pencil crowns to make the shape of a flower. I picked a sunflower, but you could make up a flower. You could go sketch one in nature. This is freedom painting. If you want a more detailed explanation on how to do a sunflower, there is an entire tutorial in this art camp about sun shaped flowers. Um, so you can go reference that. Because I use watercolor pencil crayons, I first do all my drawing. That's how I prefer to do it. Remember, you could play around with it and find your style. First, I draw and I put all of the colors that I want down. And then I go over with paint by first just putting water over my pencil crayons. And then second, using my comically small paintbrush that I love so much to add little bits of pigment little bits of paint from my paint palette and I wasn't using a lot of water here and I was giving the petals next to each other time to dry because it just makes it a little easier to work with the paint but experiment with that maybe you want your paint to run into each other in the different petals okay I started playing around with the middle and I was just using a dark brown watercolor pencil crayon and doing little drawing again because it's this freedom painting Take time doing what you want to do. So if you don't like doing all the details in the middle, don't. You ask yourself, what do I want to paint? What do I want my painting to look like? I can see the idea from what Rebecca's doing, but I am going to do what I want. So freedom painting for me is all asking myself, what do I want to do now? So don't have a plan. <laughs> you can... You can go in and do one thing at a time and then think what grabs my attention next and go there. It doesn't have to make sense. So I worked on the middle of this painting for quite a while. I uh, was listening some, to some good music and hanging out with my daughter. It was great. And so take your time with all parts of this painting. This could take you a month. There's no rush. Okay, done with my, my pep talk. Then I put some water over top of my swirl design and turned it into just plain brown. You can't see any of my swirls, but that's okay. Because there are no mistakes in art, especially when you're freedom painting. So I did the outside petals the same way. And now I use my ridiculously small paintbrush. You could also use a marker if you just have Crayola markers to go over and make designs. So I like to pick similar colors to the watercolor underneath and then I use my ridiculously small paintbrush or even a marker and I put details in a similar color over top but you can see that I'm using more paint so with watercolors the more water you use the less paint you're using so I used less water when I when I was mixing my paint on my palette and I added less water and I also added a little bit of orange because the orange mixed in with yellow. So that's yellow mixed with orange to make a slightly different color. It's more of a dark yellow, so it sticks out. So you might ask, what am I doing on this flower? So I like to imagine what a flower could look like. Now you and I have very different imaginations, so yours may not look like mine. But here I tried to do a symmetrical pattern and it's not perfect, but trying for symmetry actually helps me to focus and puts my brain into a more mindful state. So here I'm just using my ridiculously tiny paintbrush and my slightly darker paint, and I'm going over and making designs. Again, you could be using a marker. 
You could be using a pencil crayon. Experiment, see what you like. Now, when I do a freedom painting, I tell myself when I start that this does not have to look like real life. This is not realism. So that takes the pressure off and it allows my imagination to think of different ways to decorate the petals. And I challenge you to find your own style here. As I said before, I like a somewhat symmetrical look to my mindful painting, but maybe yours is more flowy. Maybe you're doing dots instead of lines. Maybe you are doing something different on each petal. There is no right or wrong way to do it. It's freedom painting. Once I'm done my flower, I begin to use a lot of water and paint to color in the background. And when I'm freedom painting, I don't like to put too much detail into the background on my first layer. Just like my first flower was a rough sketch, the background layer, play around with the water and the paint or whatever medium it is you're using. I like to play around with watercolors and let the water create shapes and things for me. And I, I know I'm not using my ridiculously small paintbrush, but I still used a pretty small paintbrush here just to control the amount of water that I'm using. I don't want it going on my sunflower because I put a lot of time into that and I really like the way it looks. So I'm careful as I'm going around the sunflower and I'm using a not too big brush because yes, when you do a background, it's good to use a big brush, but when I do it and I use too big of a brush, I usually use too much water and things get out of hand. So here I'm just adding very carefully different colors around my sunflower. I had no plan. I would literally look at my paint palette and go, ooh, that one. So randomly picking colors and playing with them, seeing what I like, what goes well together. This is all useful information for you as an artist because you're going to find out what your style is. And that is the most important piece of art learning you can ever do. Okay, moving right along, once my background is dry, I start to add that layer on top. So just like I did for the flowers, I spend some time creating on top of the first layer of paint. This I really have no plan. I look at the paint, I look at the way it dried, and I just start making lines, usually with my ridiculously small paintbrush, but sometimes with my not as small paintbrush, <laughs> my medium brush here. And I just start making lines and pictures and I could put anything, I could put literally anything in here and it would be perfect because it's freedom painting. <laughs> so once this was all dry, that's when I get out my fine tipped marker. You could use a fine tip Sharpie here um, or whatever marker you have at home, or even just a black ink pen. And I start adding details. Again, no plan. <laughs> Never a plan when you're freedom painting. I start adding lines. I start experimenting with how a curvy line looks and how can I make it more interesting? How do I like to make a curvy line? How do I like to color things in? All of this is important to know. Because every artist has their own unique style. And when you spend some time playing, you'll start to find yours. What is fun? What feels like you're really good at it? When you do it and you look at it on the page, you think, yeah, that's what I, that's what I wanted to come out there. When you're making mistakes, you think, okay, this is a mistake, but there's no mistakes in art. What is this teaching me? How can I turn this into something else? What does this want to be? And I know this sounds a little out there, but I promise that if you practice art, just practice it and let yourself do the first thing that comes to mind as much as you can. And that might even be hard at first, especially if you're a grown up. But the more you do it, the easier and more fun it will get. And just allow yourself to play. And if you're judging something, like I was really judging these leaves when I was making them, I was judging them so much. It was really unfair to these poor leaves. But then I reminded myself, oh, this doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to look real. It doesn't have to make sense. 
I'm just freedom painting, just having fun. And I'm playing with art to discover my own style and what I like. And as a creator, what you like becomes your style. (laughs) But if you never play and discover what you like, you're never going to discover your style. So I kept going with these leaves, finding places to put them, finding places where the leaf shape appeared and was ready to be drawn. And then I got sick of it and I colored in the background and made negative space. When I was doing these wavy lines, wavy lines are some of my favorite, my favorite things to draw. I started doing these dots And there's a form of art called pointillism where you draw your entire picture in dots. And I really like it. Making the dots, making the lines of dots is so relaxing for me. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite mindful art techniques. And it's, I just find it so beautiful and so relaxing. I discovered that through freedom painting. I was making these dots and I discovered how much I loved making the dots. So try it out. Do you like it? Do you have a way that you could make it better? It's all learning. Another thing that I discovered while doing my freedom painting in the past has been this contoury type line that I like to make. So you can see in the negative space behind my leaves, I'm just doing little lines and I'm following the shape that's already there to create a new shape. And I find this so relaxing. And when I look at it, it almost looks like it's move, it's movement. So I really, I recommend trying that one too. You can also experiment by adding in bits that are more real looking or, or have more of a form like this root slash tree thing that I added in there. Um, that, that, along with the leaves are they're based on something in real life but your background doesn't have to be anything but squiggly lines or dots or something else that you've imagined so take some time and enjoy this the point is not to create the end product it is to allow yourself to experience your own style of creativity so this is my finished piece and this is a good time for a reminder take a big belly breath And remember that this is just for fun. There is no right or wrong way to do it. So if you'd like to share what you created while you were having fun, you can send it to the email address in the description box for this video. Thank you so much for creating with me. And I wish you a beautiful day.